Well guys, we are here back in front of the Lodestar, which I know makes a lot of you guys happy. Um, makes us happy too. It's been a while since we worked on it. We've just been super busy. Typically summer hits and we get pretty busy on the ranch, especially because we are planting more trees and doing things like that. And so yeah, we actually haven't worked on this thing for several months. I don't even know how far, how long, but yeah, we are actually going to get the pump thrown on it, the P7100 thrown onto the Lodestar DT360. And just looking it up, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of videos on how to really do that. And so hopefully we can answer a lot of questions that people might have. Not saying that we know how to do it yet, but we're going to learn. And so hopefully through that, we can help some of you guys out too. Um, Cause like I said, there's not a lot of information on it. And so we're just gonna go at it and see what we can do. So the first thing first, take this off. Um, first thing first, I guess, you're gonna need, so first thing first is you're gonna need an adapter because this P7100 bolts up differently than the stock uh, w pump is W pump was it? MW. MW. So it's gonna bolt up differently from the MW pump, and so we have this pump adapter right here, which we got through uh, Carson Stoffer. As you can see there, I'll throw a link in it. Um, super cool that they make a part that just bolts right on. Originally, when we got it, we thought that it was gonna bolt straight onto the engine there but then after looking at it it actually replaces this back side which I guess you could call an adapter so it actually you unbolt this and then put the new adapter straight into there so it's not like it adds any more um, material or anything it just stri strictly changes this out which is kind of cool so I guess first thing first is we're gonna take this out and bolt on the new one all right guys after about an hour of trying to figure things out we think we finally have it figured out so as you can see we have everything off of the engine this is the other adapter that you take off it just held on with three bolts yeah. So this adapter is bolted onto the engine with three bolts. So just take that off and then, as you can see with these lined up, they are pretty much identical. So that's where it gets kind of confusing. How the stock injection pump timing gear works is you have the gear and it sits on the pulley or whatever you'd call it and the old pulley has these little wings on it that has the timing mark on it and so how you time the injection pump with the engine you have a peephole here and then that line is lined up with that little timing bar in there and that is how you know that the injection pump is timed with the engine so since this new adapter has that same peephole, we assumed that the timing was done the same way, but the new pulley does not have the wings. And so that's where we were super confused. And that is where I'm sure a lot of people could get confused with this. So this is where the old pump differs from the new pump. The new pump timing is set inside the injection pump and so it is irrelevant where this gear is with the engine because you make the adjustment adjustments with the timing the injection pump and not the actual gear and so once we figured that out then it all made a lot more sense and so really all you have to do is time the engine where it needs to be which Seth told us that we need to set it at 18 degrees. So we'll set that there. 
and then the pump itself is locked at a timing which is I don't know if it's top dead center or it just it's locked at the timing that it needs to be and we will have to after we get it on take off this little cover here and then there's a little plug that you pull out and flip around and then that unlocks the injection pump and so really it's actually a lot easier to do because if you know your injection pump is locked and your engine is set to the correct timing literally you just throw this on throw your pump on and then you can put the gear on and wherever it lines up it just that's where it needs to be and then you can make adjustments if you know what you're doing to your pump so that took us about an hour to figure out we we're pretty confused and like i said like i said there's not really a whole lot of information about that on the internet and so we're hoping that hey we can be kind of the first ones to truly document and say okay this is how you actually do it um and i'm pretty sure we have it right uh, me and ryan together we have a pretty good basic knowledge of how engines and diesel engines work um and so we're pretty confident at how this is gonna this is how it needs to be so we're gonna throw on the new adapter unfortunately we weren't aware that the bolts are different size they are too small for the new the new pulley so we're gonna have to run into town and get new ones if you are doing this job just know that you need to get some 7 7 dash 20 bolts for your new pulley because your old ones will not work um so we're gonna have to run into town sometime and do that unfortunately we can't do that today so we'll just get the adapter on and then continue when we have the bolts Oh, this hold on your gasket's getting smashed. Because they should go straight through and then the nut goes on, right? No, these ones these ones thread into the it. The ones that held the adapter on. Okay, okay. I think they just screwed into it. And that one was on this side actually. That last one. Oh, so there's only three? Yeah. There are those two top ones and then these. Here you have it. Still hitting on something. At least it feels like it. That is such a big pump. Mm -hmm. It's hitting on something down there. It's like the engine. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I do remember someone saying they had to like shave. They had to like shave something to get it to fit. So what Skylar is doing right now is when we put the pump in right now, it needs to go further down in the back to be able to square up inside on this adapter. So it's hitting on something. And so we were able to put it on and looked at it. And it's the oil feed for the injector pump that comes off of the engine block where the oil comes out. It's just got a kind of a riser on it. So we're going to be taking that off and we're going to, instead of having a little riser like that, we're just going to come straight out. So I'll get a closer shot. 
So this little riser right there, we'll be pulling that out and do something straight right off of that instead of having that little riser on it. And then we'll be able to put the rear end of the pump down and that'll give us the clearance. Well, good news is we got it in there. It's bolted all up. Very tight clearance to the engine. We have like a millimeter or two of space, but it fits. So for the bad news is the top of the injection pump rubs right there on the intake manifold, which we were knowing was gonna happen. Typically what you would do is you would get the non-turbo intake manifold from a tractor and it is shorter and the um, intake inlet is moved more on top here. So we found one, but it's like $400, which is kind of a lot. Or we can try and modify that one to make it work, which I'm pretty confident that I could, but that's also cutting up that one, which I don't really want to do. But there's not a whole lot of options to get the ag one. So yeah, we're kind of in a pickle right now. Don't really know what we'll do yet. We're kind of looking around to see if we can find the tractor manifold because then it can just bolt right on. You still have to shave a little bit, but for the most part, it'll bolt right on. That one, it would take quite a bit of time to try and modify and make work, but if it comes down to it, we might just have to do that. So, I don't know, we'll see. But at least we have the injection pump on. Still need to bolt the gearing on and everything, but it's in there and it looks really good. We're really happy with how it looks. It just looks like a beast in there. It's so much bigger compared to the other one. So yeah, I guess we're done for today. Just go do some research and some shopping around and decide what we want to do. And I guess next week I'll either be modifying that one or waiting for the new one to come. So I think I'm going to end this one here. We got the injection pump on. We know it fits. So a little more research and then we can come back and figure out what we want to do. Stay tuned for the next part of the injection pump series and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.